Okay, the next is uh, House Bill 446, Controlled Substances, Nabixamols. Mr. Stembridge, if you'd come forward, state your name and who you represent, sir. The podium is yours. Uh, Chairman Wood, members of the committee, my name is Kurt Stembridge. I'm the Director of State Government Affairs for Greenwich Biosciences. Greenwich is a, a U.S. subsidiary of GW Pharmaceuticals, and GW was just bought by Jazz Pharmaceuticals last year. So if you look, you'll see GW, Greenwich, and now Jazz. Um, just some history here. Um, Greenwich and GW has been studying cannabis as a medicine for over 20 years. And in 2018, the first ever drug approved by the Food and Drug Administration made from botanical cannabis was approved. The drug is called Epidiolex. Epidiolex is approved for uh, uh, children one years and above for rare forms of epilepsy of DeVray, LGS, and lennox gastro syndrome. Um, Idaho played a prominent part in uh, Epidiolex. Uh, one of the expanded access sites uh, put forth by the FDA was here in Idaho. And we just wanted to publicly express our appreciation for everyone in the state that helped with that program. Mr. Chairman, um, the research now um, for uh, uh, Greenwich is bringing forth the now a second drug that is going through the FDA pathway. This drug's generic name is called Nabixamols. Nabixamols is a highly complex botanical uh, oral mucosal spray. So you spray it in your mouth, it's absorbed through the, the lining of your, your mouth. This product has two uh, main components. Um, the first one is tetrahydrocannabidiol, which is THC. The second component is a CBD or cannabidiol. But there's other minor cannabinoids that makes up this highly complex drug and the generic name called Nabixamols. We're bringing this uh, through the FDA pathway. It has been approved in over 25 other countries, but uh, to bring it to the FDA, through the FDA pathway here in the United States, we have to do US clinical trials. We are expecting to file with the FDA sometime this year, and then that will start the clock for approval um, of uh, the, the full FDA. Mr. Chairman, um, just review my notes here for a second, to the bill, the reason why we need this bill is because currently in state of Idaho, the only marijuana approved drug is Epidiolex. Per statute, Nabixamol is illegal in the state of Idaho. That's why House Bill 446 is needed. And if you look at the bill and go to page five, line 34, we're adding uh, t two words, or Nabixamols. But to put that in context, if you go back to line 38, let me just read the definition of marijuana. Marijuana does not include a drug product in finished dosage formulation that has been approved by the United States Food and Drug Administration that contains cannabidiol, and then there's that long chemical name, and now Nabixamols. So this bill will carve out Nabixamols from the definition of marijuana here in the state of Idaho. And then, since we have a, a tetrahydrocannabidiol component of Nabixamols, our legal counsel thought we should also carve out FDA-approved drugs from the definition of tetrahydrocannabidiol. So if you turn to page 11, uh, line 11, we are adding the words or Nabixamols in a drug product approved by the Food and Drug Administration. Mr. Chairman, uh, members of the committee, um, this is a, a, a very important uh, bill for us because our goal is that once the FDA approves this drug, the DEA schedules this drug, the Idaho Board of Pharmacy reviews this drug, and Doppel, that is when a licensed prescriber in the state of Idaho can prescribe and a pharmacist can dispense now this second FDA-approved cannabis medication. Um, Mr. Chairman, we've also um, ran this bill by a number of uh, people here in the state of Idaho and agencies. Uh, Department of Finance Management, uh, the Idaho Division of Occupational Licensing, uh, Board of Pharmacy, uh, Doppel, uh, the Policy Advisor for the Governor for the State Police and the Office of Drug Policy. Mr. Chairman, uh, appreciate your time. Appreciate uh, um, running this bill. Uh, I think it's a, a major event in medicine that here we will have a second FDA approved drug made from botanical cannabis. Mr. Chairman, stand for questions. Thank you, Mr. Stembridge. Why don't you go over the principal use for the drug and the efficacy that has been uh, uh, established with this drug since, I think, 2010 in the United Kingdom? You bet. 
Right now, um, here in the United States uh, and abroad, um, nabiximals has been uh, studied in the, the um, 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 spasticity for multiple sclerosis, and we're continuing to do additional trials in uh, other neurological events. Um, to that point, um, it has, uh, like I said, been approved by 25 other countries. Um, and um, the one thing about when you go down this FDA pathway, you have to prove that it works. Not only that, you have to prove what the side effects are, what the drug-drug interactions are, all of those type of things when you're in that pathway. As far as efficacy, Mr. Chairman, um, I'd get in some pr trouble since it's not in a USF uh, approved drug right now, but just uh, needless to say that uh, those trials are ongoing. But it has been published in terms of Great Britain, et cetera. C correct. Um, further questions? Uh, Rep. Cindy Verrickson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, for question. Go ahead. Uh, just to, for clarification, what is the expected date that the FDA would approve this? Because uh, you mentioned you, you were going to do the application process, but how, how long would it be before the FDA approves? Mr. Stembridge. Right. So we, um, we will file sometime this year um, the exact date. I wish I knew, um, but uh, we are very confident that will this year. But as soon as we file with the FDA, starts a year clock, and it can be approved any time within that year. Um, i give an example like Epidiolex. Epidiolex was approved six months after it was uh, uh, submitted to the FDA. But they, F, the full clock is a full year. Representative Likely. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Stembridge, thank you for being here today. Um, they, there are some very long words in this piece <laughs> of legislation, and um, I'm certainly happy that I will not have to try to explain it on the House floor. However, um, recently the media got a hold of the fact that this was introduced, and, and much of the headline, many of the headlines read pot, um, what was it, pot derivative, you know, introduced in, in Idaho House. Would you, would you mind taking just a few minutes to perhaps dispel some of those headlines? You know, it is, you know, a cannabidiol. It is, you know, got some THC in it. But, you know, would you, would you differentiate between maybe recreational, medicinal, and what you're proposing today? Mr. 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 Chairman, Representative Likely, um, the, the big difference is that, uh, first and foremost, nabiximals is derived from botanical marijuana. Uh, that's why it carved into every statute, unless there's some uh, legislation that carves that out. The big difference is that when you go down this FDA approved pathway, you have to prove that the efficacy of the drug, the side effects, the drug-drug interactions, and also any uh, adverse reactions that is reported to this drug um, marijuana, recreational marijuana, medical marijuana does not do that at all. To that point, um, that's the beauty of doing this research on canna cannabis and cannabinoids is we follow the science. We follow the science, where the science takes us. And it's amazing to see that uh, a drug like Epidiolex changing lives in these little children with, with uh, um, major seizures. And now here comes a second drug derived from marijuana, but it's the whole FDA process. And to that point, Representative, I should say that this drug can only be prescribed by a licensed prescriber in the state of Idaho and a license uh, dispensed by a licensed pharmacist. Further questions? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Follow up? You bet. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and Mr. Stembridge. Uh, and the fact, um, you know, some have, some have asked, and I've asked this outside of this room, but I think it would be good to point out um, the reason you're coming forward this year and maybe not next year is the fact that you expect the FDA to approve that drug. And if we waited until next year, that drug would not be available for the patients that perhaps could benefit from that. Is that correct? Uh, Mr. Stembridge. Mr. Chairman, Representative Likely. Yes, the reason we're coming out early is because we want to make sure that once the FDA approves this drug, that a physician in the state of Idaho can prescribe it to a patient here. Um, we learned with Epidiolex that, because um, we have to do this in every state, every state has some kind of controlled substance um, authority. Some defer to the feds, others run their own program similar to like what you do. But we're coming out early to make sure that if anything happens, 
that we have enough time to address those through the legislative process because uh, it would be bad for patients if it wasn't uh, this option was not available once approved by the Food and Drug Administration. Further questions? Or Representative Furch? Mr. Chairman, um, so if this has been in, it's been licensed use in Europe, Britain for 10 years, is that correct? I believe 2010, it was approved in the United Kingdom, which was the first country to uh, do it. And, and specifically for uh, bladder spasticity initially associated with multiple sclerosis, which is a very significant problem in multiple sclerosis, but other spastic phases of multiple sclerosis also. Mr. Chairman and sir, um, so what, what extent of studies were conducted? Do you have any data on the methodology that was used during that process to get it to that place? In Mr. Stembridge. Mr. Chairman, Representative, we have extensive data. When um, we have over a hundred thousand, let's see, according to the company, we have over a hundred thousand um, post-marketing safety data and clinical trials in Europe. All of those clinical trials will be submitted to the FDA, but per uh, U.S. statutes, we have to run clinical trials here in the United States. So it's been extensively studied. The 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 one question I get a lot was why did Epidiolex since Nabixamil has been approved for um, a long time in Europe, what's taken it so long to come to the United States? Um, the problem is, is um, GW Pharmaceuticals was a small company. Um, resources are very tight and uh, um, tough decisions were made to say, you know, this one has to go before that one. And thus um, the benefit of now being part of Jazz Pharmaceuticals, we have uh, more re resources to do more clinical trials and doing more research on this area of cannabis. Hopefully that answers your question. Very good, thank you. Other questions, Representative Blanksma. Mr. Chairman, do you have people online that want to testify? Uh, I don't believe we have anybody signed up to testify uh, either in person or uh, online. Okay, then for a motion. Motion's in order. Motion to send House Bill 446 to the floor with the due pass recommendation. It's been moved to send House Bill 446 to the floor of the due pass recommendation. Uh, is there further questions? I'll check. Is there anyone in the audience that wishes to come forward to testify? Because this is the last time in this session I'm going to announce that. After this, you'll have to sign up online to testify. Let the record reflect that no one came forward and no one is online to testify. Is there further discussion of the motion? The Representative Furch. Mr. Chairman, um, so uh, I'm, I'm going to support this, but I just would be remiss if I didn't make a pitch for, um, you know, my clinical theories of, you know, the um, conservative care. Uh, a few years ago, there was a broadcast about children and seizures and the long and short of the program was these children are being given anti-seizure medications sometimes anxiety medications that were having significant side effects and through some personal discovery this hollywood producer found something that uh, was called the ketogenic diet it's a high fat high cholesterol diet that seemed to have an amazing effect in mitigating these childhood petite mall uh, seizures. And the notion was, and I understand the gentleman's perspective from being in the pharmaceutical industry, but nonetheless, um, the interviewer, the, the neurologist suggested that until someone could find a way to encapsulate heavy cream and butter, that the ketogenic diet wouldn't catch favor. And so as we go down this path of new pharmaceuticals and drugs and, um, you know, in today's world and the politics of the pandemic and what we're seeing with other pharmaceuticals that have decades of track record and low risk profiles being politicized, I, I just want to make sure that we are being mindful 
that there may be other pathways that don't have risk profiles at all. So with that little personal speech um, and plea for recognition of those conservative therapies, I still will support this. Thank you. Further comments? Representative Mitchell. Thank you, Chairman Wood. <clears throat> so I've, uh, I don't know a whole lot about this side of things. I've got some really good friends in the medical field that I've talked to. Um, there's still a lot of things that, uh, that I'm investigating. I'm going to go ahead and support this, um, but I do reserve the right to uh, change that decision on the floor um, as I do more investigation on this. But I just figured I'd make that mention. Representative Vandewata. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just to comment on it, I am not going to support this. I'm just, uh, I'm uncomfortable at this point because I, I feel like it's opening the door for the recreational and medical marijuana because you are saying the TCH, the derivative, and it's not FDA approved at this point yet. So I will be not supporting this. Uh, I may change my mind by the time it gets to the floor, but at this point, I'm just not comfortable supporting this motion. Further comments? Representative Rebell. Oh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I will definitely be supporting this motion. Um, I'm not concerned. I don't think there's really that much psychoactive use that this can be put to, frankly. Um, but uh, beyond that, uh, we have vastly more dangerous um, painkillers out there on the market that will mess people up way, 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 way more than this could in your wildest dreams. And if this helps people not use opioids and not use those much more dangerous ones, I think this is a great option. Further comments? Last chance, the, uh, the chair will make a comment. Um, I, th I think most things that uh, we've heard here today, I can understand people's uh, um, concern and worry. <laughs> to Representative uh, Furch's point, uh, you know, and I discussed this with, uh, with uh, the proponents or the uh, bringer of this bill, that, you know, we could accomplish the same thing for a few dollars a month by just uh, smoking a little weed on a ditch bank. <laughs> And, and to be perfectly honest with you, uh, you know, that th there's two things that uh, marijuana has that is superior to essentially any pharmaceutical that's been invented, and that is its angiolytic abilities and its anti-emetic abilities, which are wonderful. Better than, better than you can find in any drug. Um, and if it's in the form of uh, ditch bank weed, you know, whether it's sunflowers or cannabis or whatever, uh, it's pretty cheap. Um, and uh, it's certainly, it's going to wind up being uh, probably a Schedule II drug. From a clinical point of view, it probably shouldn't even be scheduled. That's how non-dangerous it is, really, from a uh, point of view of being uh, a psychoactive drug. Um, be that as it may, um, I would oppose it too, other than it's the FDA approved. And when it's FDA approved, then it's far, far, far less dangerous than probably 85, 90% of all of the medications that we prescribe in terms of its safety uh, and in terms of its efficacy. Uh, and that includes a bunch of just plain legend drugs, not scheduled drugs. So, so in terms of efficacy and in terms of safety, um, but if you've ever seen multiple sclerosis patients, um, anything that we can do to help those people particularly if it's FDA approved, then I'm for. And that's why I agreed to carry this on the floor, which I will. So thank you, Mr. Stenbridge, for bringing it. And thank your company for uh, trying to help these people. We appreciate it very much. Um, with that said, is there further motions? Hearing none, all those in favor of the original motion say aye. Aye. 
Aye. Those opposed, no. Chair, uh, do you wish to be recorded? Yep. Uh, chair votes aye, and House Bill 446 will be sent to the floor. The do pass recommendation, the chair will carry that on the floor. Thanks, Mr. Chair. Thank Mr. you.